Hello, I'm Megan Meyer. I'm Executive Director for Superior Public Museums. Superior Public Museums operates three historic sites in Superior, Fairlawn Mansion, the SS Media Royal Bank Ship, and the Old Firehouse and Police Museum. So today, we're going to take you through a tour of the first floor of Fairlawn Mansion, talk about Victorian superstitions, as well as some of our own ghost stories. So I'll give you a brief history of Fairlawn Mansion. So this is Grace and Martin Pattison. They are the family that built Fairlawn Mansion. They met in Marquette, Michigan in 1879 when they were married. They then moved to Superior, where um, Martin was mayor of Superior three times. He was a sheriff. He also had logging and mining businesses, especially up on the Iron Range. Grace was busy herself. She was co-founder of the Children's Home and Refuge Association in 1904. So when her and her daughter Lois moved to California after Martin's death, they deeded the home to be a children's home. So from 1920 to 1962, so which is 42 years, it operated as a children's home. And it was taken over by the Douglas County Historical Society, went through extensive renovation in the 90s, and then was taken over by Superior Public Museums, which still operates today, over 20 years later. So this is the carriage entrance to the home. So if you were a guest of the Pattison, you would have used the main entrance, but the family would have used this entrance. Now the Pattisons were very affluent. So they actually had gas and electric, which was new during that time. So the light here was gas and electric. They always had a backup in case um, the electricity failed. So we're gonna walk into the library and then I will get into some more stories. So this is a beautiful room in Fairlawn Mansion. This was the family library. So they spent a lot of time reading in here. So the Pattisons had eight children, six that grew into adulthood. So they had seven girls and one boy, Byron. The two youngest daughters, Lois and Myrna, had twin sisters when they were born. So Lois's twin was Lita, and uh, Myrna's twin was Verna. Each of those, Lita and Myrna, passed away right around the age of two, we believe from diphtheria. They would have passed away in the home. So we have record of three deaths, and I'll talk about the other one in just a little bit. Um, we have not had any experiences with them, fortunately, but um, we do have some other experiences that, which I'll get to. So we're going to head into the sitting room. So this room is quite interesting actually for Victorian superstitions. So as we all know, 13 is an unlucky number, but if you count the rosettes around the ceiling here, there are 13 rosettes. So either the Pattisons didn't believe in superstitions or it just so happened that when there were 13 up there, they figured, well, so be it. And we'll just live with the bad luck. But the Pattisons did have a lot of good luck. So hopefully that didn't influence anything. Um, Victorian superstition, a lot of it we still practice and believe in today. So they did do a lot of seances. It was very common um, during the Victorian times. They also had a lot of superstitions around death. So when somebody would pass away, they would make sure to cover all portraits of them in a black cloth. So Martin's portrait, his original one would have been hanging over on that wall there. That would have been covered. Any pictures as well of family members that would have passed away. They would have held the funerals in the home and they also would have carried the bodies out, for example, feet first, because they wanted to make sure that the souls would not come back into the home. The umbrellas, not opening an umbrella in the home was popular during that time as well. Um, colors of flowers mattered to them too. So any superstitions you think of today would have all started during the Victorian times. So we're gonna head into the Grand Hall here. So this is the main entrance to the home. Um, you may have heard of a few stories online about Fairlawn Mansion. One for sure is not true. There were no deaths in the pool, no drownings during the children's home, as the pool was actually drained before the children's home. Now, the one in regards to the servant does have some merit to it. For example, the story itself we believe to be true, where one of the servants that worked at Fairlawn um, was living with her boyfriend, husband, can't remember exactly which one it was, and supposedly she was murdered. Now, like I said, that story does have some merit, but whether or not she haunts Fairlawn has yet to be determined. Some of the staff in the past have believed she has followed them on tours. I have not had any experience with that, but you have to come by some night for our flashlight tours and see if that is in fact true. Um, 
Other than that, we believe with the children's homes, since well over 2,000 children lived here, that there would have been deaths during that time. We don't um, have any records of specific deaths since the records are sealed for that. Um, but there have been claims of people hearing children laughter and whatnot. Um, so we're gonna head into the parlor here. So this is Grace's parlor. Now this room was a site of many happy things, such as a wedding. So it was common for Victorians to light candles during events. The number three candles were only lit during weddings. Otherwise it was unlucky to light candles um, in odd numbers. So of course, we've all heard of something new, something blue, something borrowed, something blue. So that was also started during Victorian times, especially during weddings. Now this room would have been the site of Martin's um, funeral. Martin passed away in December, on December 18th, 1920 at the age of 77 from complications from diabetes. He was ill for a few days, not feeling quite well, and went to bed and did not wake up the next morning. So his funeral would have been here. He is the other death that we know of in the home. And he did pass away in his room. So occasionally we will sell cigar smoke. Um, I have smelled that myself. So we feel it's just Martin passing through, checking on his home. Uh, they loved entertaining in the home. So I'm pretty sure Martin's pretty happy that we're still entertaining in the home and showing off the beautiful mansion that is Fairlawn Mansion. So another um, claim that people have had is that they'll hear footsteps. That is true. <laughs> I have heard them myself. I was sitting in my office one time and I heard footsteps go by my door and I looked, nobody was here. I asked, hello, didn't hear anything. Heard him again and thought, okay, somebody's just visiting and continued on with my day. So fortunately, we don't have anything scary here. Um, just people that love the mansion just as much as we do. So we'll head into the music room. This is my favorite room in the home because of the Birds Eye Maple. So music was a big entertainment source during Victorian times. So we have an 1879 Chickering piano here, which is similar to what the Pattisons would have had. They would have used this screen here to separate the rooms since they did not have pocket doors. So you can imagine a lot of entertainment went on in this room. We're going to walk through the conservatory and then I'll talk a bit more about this area here. So this door is not scary itself, but its name is actually quite scary. This is called a guillotine door because it raises and lowers. They couldn't accommodate regular doors here, so they did this instead. Um, so it, like I said, it raises and lowers, so it's very much so like a guillotine. It's also called a jib door. Fortunately, it's not going to come down on us at all. So as I have mentioned, the pool where supposedly children drown, which is not true, but directly under this room is where the pool sits. Um, we do still have the pool. It's been used for storage ever since the children's home and that's what it's still used for today. However, still fully intact. Um, the Pattisons would have used it. It was built for, uh, with the home. We actually have some really cool stories of the Pattisons, especially Martin, where one of the servants, her bring her son Wilbur along and Martin would greet him at the door and say, hi Wilbur, let's go downstairs and he'd take him swimming and teach him how to swim. Um, the servants as well were very, um, were treated very well by the Pattisons. Grace had a philosophy that everybody should be treated exactly the same. So many of the servants got married here, um, visited with their families. Um, the girls would share their clothing with them. They would take them with them to the leisure lodge and some actually went with them to California when they moved there. So they were very much so part of the family. So more than likely they visit Fairlawn as well. So we don't have tons of haunting stories, but you can definitely feel presence here for sure. And like I said, you hear noises, you smell certain things, we'll smell perfume as well. Um, fortunately, we haven't heard anybody talking, so that's a good thing. Another thing you may have heard about the home too is that there's a tunnel. That's kind of a little story that floats around because the Pattisons did own two homes that sit on 3rd Street. Um, they built those after Fairlawn for their children and also for guests to stay in. However, there is no tunnel that connects the homes. It would make sense, so they didn't have to travel outside during the winter. But when they did the foundation work several years ago, there was no evidence of a tunnel whatsoever. 
Um, the basement is very much like a basement. Um, they did have a bowling alley down there as well. So the Passons used every piece of their home for entertaining. Now I have to say, the ghosts aren't scary in Fairlawn. The bats are scary because sometimes we'll have those fly down. So if anything scares me in this house, it's probably the bats that scare me the most. But we highly encourage you to come and visit Fairlawn, learn some more of the stories that we do have, um, and learn the history of Fairlawn and how much we absolutely love this place. So thank you for spending your coffee break with us. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us.